Hey guys, welcome back. We've covered quite a few topics in the last few weeks for our Hit Film Basics Masterclass, and it's coming to a close quite soon, so if you missed any of those other videos, check the playlist in the description. In this tutorial, we're going to be showing you one of the most popular visual effects techniques, and that is green screen. We'll also be taking a look at rotoscoping, which is a fancy term for cutting things out. Now, green screen can be used for a wide variety of visual effects. You can use it to put yourself in a different location, but in this context, we're going to use it to put Ollie inside of the gameplay without any sort of distracting box. This is a technique that a lot of streamers use, and because we know you guys are into gameplay videos, we thought this would make a good example. But the workflow that we'll use to remove the green is exactly the same as if you were using it for cinematic purposes. We have a number of tutorials on different green screen techniques for putting yourself in footage. We've done things on how to put yourself into the Avengers or the Witcher, as well as videos on how to actually set up the lighting to get the best results, and other tutorials on green screening in general. So be sure to check those out if you're interested. Let's go ahead and get started. I've once again got some gameplay footage on the timeline, and on the track above, I've got Ollie from our Game On Masterclass. Let's go ahead and first remove the green color. It's pretty easy to do, so I'll select the clip and come over to the effects panel. You can either search for it or it's in the keying folder. The effect I'm going to use is called Color Difference Key. I can click and drag that onto my clip, and you'll see that it starts to work right away. Down here, I can select the screen color if you're using something different, but in this case, green works well. I'll go ahead and raise the min value to get rid of more of the green. And then I'll lower the max if it starts to cut out pieces of Ollie's footage. So keying out the green worked, but we've got a few extra elements in the frame that we don't want. So for example, we can see the borders of the green screen here, we can see the mic stand, and maybe the mic itself you might not even want to include. So what I'm going to do is rotoscope those out. And like I said at the beginning, this is pretty much a fancy term for cutting things out. You might also hear it be referred to as masking. So you can do this on either the editor timeline or in a composite shot, but what I'll do is make sure the clip is selected, and then come up here to the freehand mask tool. We have a number of other mask tools if you want to do a rectangle mask, which is just four points, or an ellipse, which is basically a circle. In this case, I want to draw my own custom shape, so I'll select freehand, and then if I click multiple times around the video, you can see these points being created. So I'll go ahead and click around the shape that I want to keep. And when I click the first point again, it'll close the shape and it'll also apply the mask. If you realize you made a mistake later, you can always adjust the mask. Just select the free hand again. And then in the controls panel, select the mask that you drew. And then I can move the points if I want to adjust the mask. So that's good, but he's obviously taking up a lot of the frame. So what I'll do is select his clip, and then in the transform properties, I can lower the scale, and then maybe put him in the bottom left here. And that's it, it's that easy to remove the green on a video and put them in some other location. Now we did use the color difference key in this effect, but there are a couple of other effects that you can use if that one isn't giving you a good result. We have the hue and RGB key, which allows you to choose a specific color, then we also have the chroma key effect, which is part of the composite pro keying pack. The difference between all of these effects is the formula that they use to remove the green. So depending on your shot, you might get a better result using a different effect. If you're looking to green screen yourself into a different location realistically, a big factor in that is the lighting and setup that you have before you even hit record. We've done a video in the past for top five tips for setting up your green screen, so definitely give that a watch if you're looking to improve the quality of your green screen. We got a quick look at rotoscoping when we traced out Ollie, but let's take a look at how to use it in a practical visual effects example. I've got this clip here of three stormtroopers in a Star Wars looking hallway. And this comes from our previous masterclass called Rebellion, where we showed you how to make Star Wars visual effects. The problem was when shooting this was that we only had three stormtrooper outfits and we wanted to make it look like there were a lot more, like a big army. So what we did was we set up the camera on a tripod, we filmed one plate, then we filmed another with the same three actors, and then another, and then one more. And we used HitFilm to combine all of these plates together to make it look like there were multiple stormtroopers. To do that inside of HitFilm, what I'll do is come over to the media panel, right click the first clip and select make composite shot. As I mentioned in the previous video, composite shots are useful for when you're wanting to work on one specific shot. I'll go ahead and hit okay and we'll see the clip here in the viewer. Now what I'll do is come over to the media panel, select clip two, 
and drag that on top of clip 1. It'll cover it completely, but that's okay. Now with clip 2 selected, I can come up to the rectangle mask tool, and I'll zoom out a bit by using my mouse scroll wheel, and then click and drag to create a box on the left side here. And now you can see that we have six stormtroopers in view, and that's because we are cutting out a piece of clip 2 and overlaying it onto clip 1. So let's do that again with clip number 3, which has the stormtroopers on the right side. I'll come up and select the rectangle mask, and again draw a shape over here on the right. Now we've got nine stormtroopers. Let's do it once more for clip number four. And in this case, we've got an irregular shape. I want to make sure that it follows the outline of the stormtrooper. So I'll once again select the freehand mask tool. And if I click and drag up here, you can see that two handles come out. And this means I'm about to create a curve. So I'll keep clicking and dragging, and this will create multiple curves to follow the outline of the stormtrooper. Then I'll come back around and close the shape. So if I go layer by layer here, you can see clip number four, which has been cut out on the right side, clip number three, which is also on the right, clip number two, which is on the left, and clip number one, which fills in all the background. And now we have 10 stormtroopers in our scene where we only had three costumes available. You might notice that the mask edge will be a bit rough, and this is because it's not feathered at all. If I select layer number four and then come over to the controls panel, we have that mask property. If I drop down the shape settings, there's a parameter for feather strength, and this will blur the edge to make it a bit more smooth. So I'll go ahead and increase that. You don't want to increase it too much because it'll start to affect the rest of the clip. So in this case, I'll just leave it at around five. So here's before, you can see the outline here, and here's after. It sort of matches the out of focus look that the camera had. I could do this on the other layers as well, but the edges aren't too visible, so it's not that important. We did a similar technique in our masterclass Halo Jump, where we only had, I think it was about six army outfits, and we needed around 12 or 13 people. So we filmed ourselves on one side of the plane, and then the other, and then we combined them with masking. An important thing to know is that masks can be keyframed just like anything else. So if I come down here to transform, you can see that all of these properties can be keyframed. The path is each individual point, so if I were to activate keyframes for the path, and then skip forward and maybe change a few of these points, this doesn't really make sense in the context, but it shows what happens, you can see that that mask is now animated. So this is how you cut something out and have it move over time. So if you're wanting to isolate a person and you don't have a green screen, you're going to have to do it through masking. It's not the most fun technique in the world because it does take a lot of time and attention to detail. So we do recommend using a green screen if you have one, but if you're in a pinch, rotoscoping is a way to isolate an actor in your scene. Masking can also be used to put CG elements behind actors in your scene. So if we go back to a previous example from the last episode, we have this text and we have this woman here who walks forward. If I wanted to have the text bigger and maybe a bit further down, you'll notice that it gets in the way of the woman in the scene. If I wanted, I could duplicate the actual footage itself place it on top of the text, so layers are red bottom to top, and then mask out the woman here. So I could use the freehand mask tool, and then draw a shape around her. Then I could feather it a little bit. And the result is the text is now behind the woman in the video. Now, obviously she walks forward in the scene, and if I continue to play it, you can see that the mask stays in one spot, while she moves out of the way. So what I would have to do is come into the mask properties under transform and activate keyframes for, let's say the path and position. And then this is the hard part is basically go frame by frame and adjust the mask so that it matches. Now I'm not going to show this entire process because it is quite painful, but this is the technique for rotoscoping. This is how you put CG elements behind things in your scene. You do have to do it manually. There isn't really a magic way to do it. But it is a cool technique to use if you want to place text behind something in your image or have someone walk in front of the text. It's a good way to add some interest to your videos. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And again, if you missed any of the other videos in this masterclass, you can find them in the playlist on screen. We'll be back soon with the last video in our HitFilm Basics masterclass, and we'll show you how to export your video so that you can share it with everyone else. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next tutorial.